Today I'm gonna teach you all there is to know about Swedish Midsummer. Next to Christmas, Midsummer is one of Sweden's most important holidays. Officially, Midsummer is a Christian holiday to celebrate John the Baptist's birthday. But uh, everyone knows that it's a pagan ritual, right? There's actually no evidence that Midsummer is based on a pagan ritual. But come on! Midsummer is also a magical night, because the boundaries between our world and the unseen world are thinnest on a Midsummer Eve. There are lots of cool magical traditions, like if you pick seven types of flowers and you sleep with them under your pillow on that night, then you're gonna dream of your true love. I tried that once. Uh, all I dreamt about was uh, being pissed drunk at a rock festival. So how do you celebrate Midsummer? Well, first of all, you need a place to celebrate that. It's traditional to celebrate with friends out in a cabin in the woods, but uh, I have no friends, so I'm all alone at Skansen instead. You also eat traditional Swedish food at Midsummer. For example, boiled potatoes and crisp bread and a nasty old herring. Mmm. Let me show you some of this god-awful herring. Uh. Oh, appetizing, isn't it? Look at it. Oh, it bloody smells of fish here now. Uh. Some people like this. I don't. It's a wonder there are no Swedish restaurants all over the world, right? Uh, bloody midsummer pole. Stay up. There are actually a lot of discussions about whether or not to peel the fresh potatoes. So there are some pros and cons and my very thought out comment on this is shut the f up and eat. Can you grab it from my hand? Ow! <laughs> Bloody duck. Just look at that disgusting food. That's why there's also a lot of drinking at Midsummer. You drink a lot of snaps at Midsummer and uh, you also sing drinking songs. For example, a very short one, a Finnish drinking song that goes like this. Nu. There's a longer version of that song. It goes uh, int nu, men nu. I'm actually not sure if I'm allowed to drink here, so let's hope no one notices. There are longer drinking songs too. For example, he lang går, sjung hopp för lalla. Oh, look at this. Here's a sleeping duck. And I've been singing drinking songs right next to her. Sorry, did I wake you up? Maybe I have some bread to compensate you for a very big piece. Oh, oh, oh. I'm getting attacked here. Let's talk about the Midsummer Pole. Everyone knows what this looks like, but uh, there are actually no official records saying that this is a phallic symbol. Yeah, right. On Midsummer, children and grown-ups dance around this non-phallic symbol and uh, they often dance weird stuff like uh, Små Grodorna, the little frogs. An older name for the Midsummer Pole is a Maypole, but uh, that actually has nothing to do with the month of May. It's uh, from Tumaya to dress in flowers. Now you know. I have an idea. I'm gonna see if I can get this duck to dance around the Midsummer Pole. Come on. Come up. Come up. Yep, yep. Come, come, come. Dance around it. Dance around it. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I'm ecstatic. I did it. In the movie Midsummer, there's a tradition called Etestupa, where some old people jump from a cliff. I'm uh, sorry to disappoint you, but that rarely happens in real Midsummer celebrations. Also, there are surprisingly few blood sacrifices and uh, ritualistic sex orgies happening. Don't come to a Midsummer party expecting those. You have to go to a different type of club for those kind of things. Now you know what to expect from a Swedish Midsummer celebration. Yeah, and this is pretty much how it ends normally. Bring a bottle of booze, put some flowers in your hair, and uh, pretend to like the herring. Then you're all set for a Swedish Midsummer. 
Well, that's it for today. So you know the drill, like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day.